Hi, I'm John Twist of University Motors. Today we're going to take a look at a TF, a TF-1500. This is TF-9611, I think, 9511. Remember that they changed the serial number sequencing at the introduction of the TF and started the, started the serial numbers with 501, whereas 251 had been the number uh, at the beginning of each model prior to this. And when they got done with this, then they started the MGAs right from that point, and that's why the MGAs begin at 10101. That's a side issue. What are we doing today? We're taking a look at this engine. This is using a lot of oil. There are three reasons that you use oil. Well, let's go back to two. You, you either are leaking it or you're burning it, right? If you're leaking it, you see it on the ground. It doesn't stop dripping the moment you get in your driveway. In fact, usually, everything that's been collected on the underside of the car drops off and you can see it. So you're either leaking it or burning it. We're talking about burning here. We're burning oil for one of three reasons. Either the inside of the engine is pressurized and on a T-type that's hard to do because there's an oil draft tube about the diameter of your thumb that all the fumes can come out. Underneath here's the oil draft tube here, okay? So as long as this guy's in place and not plugged up, he'll be all right. We did have one car one time that, um, that had the aluminum side cover on it and that was so restricted that the inside of the engine pressurized. And that used an enormous amount of oil because the oil scraper rings just couldn't get the stuff off, off the walls. The next reason it loses, uses oil, burns oil, is because it comes down the valve guides. Now there is a Fel Pro oil seal, an umbrella oil seal you can buy to put on top of the cylinder head. If you need to know this, you can call us during our tech time. I'll give you the number. I'd give it to you now, but I forgot it. And, um, but that only evidences itself when you're idling or after a period of deceleration, you hit the gas and then you get this huge, huge puff of smoke out, out the back end. It's always the rings. Now, I use a wide brush there to say it's always the rings. That's the rule, of course, there's an exception to every rule. But it's always the rings, as it was with this one. We redid this engine in 1980, and it's got 5,000 miles on it, and it's using lots of oil. Why? Probably because it didn't get enough, uh, enough miles on it. You know, it just, the, the rings just, uh, the, the cylinder walls are glazed up now, and we're, we're going to have to deglaze them. So what did we find when we took this thing apart? Okay. Well, these are parts from different engines, but we found the push rods, we found the tops of the push rods loose. The push rods are made out of three individual pieces, the top, the bottom, and the tube. And these are, our, well, you can't tell with this one, but these guys were um, welded, um, and, uh, but they, they have come loose. So this will make just a tremendous amount of racket um, un, untouched. So as I, I showed you before, you can braise them, but that only lasts so long because braise is so, so brittle. So the bottoms hardly ever come loose. The tops come loose a lot. Ends up with all this extra noise. Some of the studs on this engine were stretched. We'll do a little cutaway and a little close up here. So here are these threads, 10 by 1.5, and if we put a straight edge up against there, you can see how they're, how they're bell shaped. I mean, first of all, you can see that the threads are, are farther apart. This one's particularly horrid. That, that, one's, uh, that one's got a lot of, a lot of d distance here where it's, where it's pulled in, as does this one. And this is not uncommon, the T-type the uh, torque, head torque, I, I want to, without looking, I want to say it's about 45 pounds. And, uh, geez, Bill Bodger's been in here before and, and pulled these things way, way down way too snugly at some point for a tune-up or something. So it's important that these threads are all, all the same size or it's going to snap when you go to put it back together. If you run a 10 by 1.5 die on this, of course, it isn't going to line up. I mean, it's, it's going to cut new threads. So that's a dead giveaway that there's a problem. What else did we find out? Well, we, uh, let's take a lifter out of here. I've got a rag. I don't know, this is going to be hard to see, but there's a pattern here on the lifter, a shiny pattern. I don't know 
when you can see it, but I'm moving it back and forth. The lifter is supposed to spin. It's supposed to spin as the engine runs, but sometimes they don't spin. So it ends up wearing into a, into a pattern, and once that pattern is, gets to a certain depth, then it ruins the, ruins the crank, excuse me, ruins the camshaft. This one is particular, it's hourglass shaped. I don't know, you know, it's awful shiny here. I don't know if you can see it. We'll, maybe we'll do a cut in and see if that'll help out a little bit. Anyway, so we're gonna change these guys too, and we're gonna make sure that we use ZDDP in the engine when we put it back together. But the reason I've come to talk to you about this is because I wanna show you a glaze breaker. Now, we call a glaze breaker a dingleberry brush, and you can see why. Because it looks like, you know, there's all these dingleberries on the end. So when, when we go to prepare a cylinder to accept new rings, old pistons, but new rings, the first thing is to, to do is to take the ridge off the top of the cylinder. Where the cylinder's worn, the cylinder's increased in diameter. So at the top of the cylinder, there'll be an area which is ever so slightly smaller in diameter than the worn part. So the first step is with a ridge reamer is to take that very, very thin ridge off. And boy, there's nary a ridge here. It just hasn't got that, that many miles on it. The next thing you do is you take long honing stones, that long, and you hone the cylinder walls up and down, and you get them nice and straight so they aren't, they aren't cupped, so they're not on, on angles, that they're, they're nice and straight and parallel. Then when you're all done with that, you take your dingleberry brush and a lot of oil and run this down, up and down, so that the scratch marks the scratch marks end up with a 60 degree crosshatch. That is 60 degrees here, 30 degrees up here. So that's what we're doing. We've also taken the rods and pistons out to the machine shop where the bottom of the rods are gonna be recircled. That means that the diameter at the bottom of the rod is gonna be circular again because over a long period of time they, they tend to elongate. Lots to do here. And how expensive is this? Well, we can go through a couple of thousand dollars doing just this. A complete T-type engine is uh, easily the better part of five thousand dollars. So this is a this is a, a, a sort of a temporary measure. Well, we've got the rods out. Of course, we're going to put in new rod bearings. And as long as the mains are exposed, we're going to change the bottom main bearings. Why wouldn't you change the top main bearings? Because that requires you to take the engine out, take the crank out, out of the engine. Now we're up to a whole engine rebuild. All we're going to do is change what we can. On an MGB engine, it's possible to change the top and bottom shells, but only on the three center uh, um, main bearings. You can't do it on the ends because of the way the engine's assembled and how the bolts are fitted. On this one, all we can do is change the bottoms. So in the end, we're going to get a little better oil pressure we are going to have our oil control rings scrape and fit the walls much, much better than they were before. This was using about a tank, uh, a quart of oil per tank. And having worked with the cylinder head, we're going to make sure that our compression is going to be nice and consistent. This thing ran really, really well before. It's going to run really, really, really well when we're done. Hey, let, let me make a pitch for our summer party coming up August 18th. Make sure that uh, you go on the website and you take a look. We got a car, we got a pull handle MGB that's up for auction uh, by Mark Brandau uh, at Quality Coaches in Minneapolis. Um, we've got, we're featuring the pull handle MGBs. I was just talking to the hotel this morning. We're gonna be out at the racetrack on Friday night uh, for a dinner. And we're also gonna be out on the racetrack again on Sunday for a parade lap, or if you want to sign up, you can take your car out and run it around, around and around for an hour or so. Information's all on our website, so tune in. And shortly after that, my wife and I will be going to Fort Bragg to visit my son who's coming home from Afghanistan, and I hope that that's going to merge just perfectly with catching a flight up to Altoona, because the weekend after Labor Day, uh, I'm going to be in, uh, Lynn and I will be in Altoona, Pennsylvania for the Central British Car Show there. Want information about this stuff? Go on our website.
or give us a call. Thanks so much. See you.